Welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This is Karez speaking, and I thank you for spending another moment with us. Before we get into this episode, first we want to pay our dues. This episode is brought to you by Transparent Credit Repair, the superheroes of the financial literacy and credit repair world. If you're looking to alleviate yourself from debt, open your wallet up to receive more money, and you want a better means of survival than stimulus check to stimulus check, please contact Transparent Credit Repair at www.transparentcreditrepair.com or you can call them at 862-250-5122. Tell them Heritage Hip Hop sent you and you may get something very nice. This episode, we talked to one of the, the more bar-heavy active MCs in New Jersey that you may or may not have heard of. If you have heard of him, then celebrate him. If you have not, Heritage Hip Hop's mission is to bring your new favorite artist to you. And on this episode, we reintroduce the world to Chief Bally, host of the 420 Bally show on A Squad Rebel Radio and freshly signed to Champagne International Music Group, CIMG. Without further ado, we want to bring Chief Bally to you, who not only stands for hip hop, but the 420 movement and its benefits. Stay tuned, and after this, I'll come back with the rest of my commentary. Peace and blessings, everybody. Karev is back, and guess what? We had somebody who previously interviewed come back. Introduce yourself to the people, please. Yeah, it's your boy, Chief Valley. <laughs> Chief Valley from Big City, you already know. What up, man? What up, Average Hip Hop? How are you? Yo, man, I'm just happy to be back. You know what I'm saying? I'm back with my man right here. First of yeah. all, before we start, thank you for letting us come on your show. Last time we did this interview, which was like two years ago, <laughs> I, I was not on the Bally show at all. 420 Bally Hour on East Black Rebel Radio every Sunday. Find out the times. If y'all don't, y'all stupid. But I was on the show, and we've built a relationship since then, and it's an honor once again to interview you. Thank you so much, bro. Yo, super honor for you even having me again. Word up. And it's been too long. You're right. Two years ago, a lot has happened since then, you and me. And um, I'm just blessed to be a part of your movement because you're doing your thing. Appreciate yeah. it. So let's catch up. From the last interview, No Better was the new song that came out. <laughs> and for everybody who's paid attention to you, you released two new tracks. You have Redemption, and now you have Stay Winning out right now, correct? That, that, Stay Winning single. What was the growth you had to go through from that first project to now these new songs? Well, the project was out then to the new songs that are out right now. Um, well, I had to. I feel as though I had to experience life um, a little bit more. Um, after the the first project, I went through a huge writer's block. Like that last mm. project, the hate is hate, hate play, was done done at the end of 2018. And um, here it is, 2020, and I'm, I'm just starting to get back into my groove, and I'm, I'm featured on, like, a good six or seven collabs that I'm doing now, and, um, you know, the new single State Women is out. So, honestly, I just needed shit to happen to me. You know, like, my life was starting to get very um, um, lethargic, very, very predictable. You know what I mean? I'm, mm. a, I'm a family and I'm a father. So it was, it was yeah. wake up, go to work, come home, please the wife, please the kids, go to sleep. Wake up, go to work, same shit every day. So mm -hmm. after a while, it's like you have nothing to draw off of. I have nothing to write off of. And I'm not the type of artist that likes to make up shit. So yeah. nothing's happening to me to write about. <laughs> I can't write shit. It's like a straight up blank canvas. So with this whole coronavirus shit that's been going on and me being able to, you know, actually sit on my ass and sit home because, you know, I've been furloughed from my job, it's given me time to more so reflect and actually have shit to write about now. <clears throat> Word. Because, see, the thing about Chief Bally's music is Chief Bally is like the type of guy who sees the action but tells you the the, the emotion behind the action. Right. I mean, to me, you are a hip-hop's commentator. You are like the Stephen A. Smith of hip-hop right now. <laughs> and the reason why... And the reason why I say that, like I said, is because you know how Stephen A. gets passionate. He's always yelling and stuff. When you get passionate, you don't yell. You get in depth, and that's what separates an MC from a rapper. What have you gone through that moved you towards that that lane of not just rapping but reporting and giving people the real and not just the truth? 
Um, basically, kind of like my upbringing and, and being around uh, Ox, which is, um, shout out to Ox, he's from 8 Mile. He's one of my favorite rappers as well and also my best friend. Um, mm-hmm. He used to, be, you know, we've been rapping together since we was 15. And I used to really just be wordsy, wordsy, punchline, wordsy, make everybody, oh, shit. But he made me really dig into content and really, really bringing somebody into your story and really, really having them connect on a different level. Um, mm. The crazy thing about it is, and I tell Blues this, my man Blues this all the time, some of, punch lines don't even get me in records anymore. They do, I go, oh, shit, that was slick. But then I move on. It'd be those other lines like, um, I believe um, Drake, Drake said um, in one of his verses, um, I know I'm going to make it, I just pray that I'm alive for it. Like, it'd be those I know that I'm going to win. I just play that I'm alive for it. Like, see, shit like that, That's the, those are the lines that really resonate with me, that really get me. It's because I can connect to that. It's like, yo, word is going. I, I hope I'm alive, too. <laughs> like, I, I know I'm going to make it, but the way I live and the way we out here, shit, we could die in any given second. So, you know, it's those lines that really resonate, the ones that get into your psyche, and, and you can actually pick something out of your day and go, yo, oh, shit, that happened to me today. And that nigga just said it. It's somebody out there that's going through the same thing I'm going through. So, um, yeah, that 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 really does it for me. You know what I mean? It's, it's that type of it's that type of rap. It's that type of music. <clears throat> Chief Bowley's music is not authentic to the ear of a person who doesn't know music. What is your definition of music, and how do you make it? Um, my definition of music has always been um some something that you attach to emotionally. And something that gets you through something. Like I use music as a, a as a instrument of therapeuticness, if that's even a word. <laughs> but um, I use my music to get me. I use my music to get me through things. And I, I I truly believe that music is a driving force and was put here to help humanity get through certain times and get through certain things. Whether it's a um, a song that reminds you of a lost love, or whether it's a song that reminds you of that job that you want to, always wanted to have, but you got a better job. And you know what I'm saying? Whether it's a celebration, music um, transcends through time and it takes us through different situations. True, because when you listen to music, it gets you ready to go to war or it gets you ready to make love. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it can get you um, ready to clean the crib. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, unfortunately, but, but unfortunately, and not to blame a lot of artists of today, I'll blame the mainstream media of today. A lot of us listen to music just because, not with the purpose. Your music is very purposeful. What is the most purpose song that you feel you ever wrote? Huh, the most purposeful songs that I've ever wrote. Um, I've got three that comes to mind. I'm going to just try to pick one. I would definitely say... Um, you can say all three. Parachute. Oh, okay. Parachute. We can start there. Redemption. Parachutes because um, parachutes. If anybody's heard it, they can check it out on my SoundCloud right, right now too. Soon to be available in stores as well. Off the hateful late. It's basically um, a story about men and how we deal with breaking up and how we don't admit to ourselves that basically um, what we had was good and when what was gone, you know, we don't admit it. So it literally takes you through all three stages of the breakup. It takes you through the first stage of denial, him trying to um, the second verse is him trying to. Um, um, replace it with, you know, clubs, clothes, and all whole bunch of bullshit that really doesn't matter. <laughs> and then the third verse is basically him coming to fruition and realizing what he lost. Um, I, that song is very purposeful to me because um, being a man and, and having this society machismo put on us that we're not supposed to cry and we're not supposed to have emotion or anything like that, I felt, that was, I felt as though that was much needed um, to speak from that perspective. Um, redemption um, purposeful to me because it helped me get through something that my daughter was going through, and it helped, also helped me understand something that my friend was going through. Which each ver- um, you know, that's what each verse was about. Um, the other song is um, "No Better" featuring Brianna Marin, Marin, which is also on the Hateful Eight. Um, that song I wrote when I was down, man. I had just lost a really, really good job of mine at the time. This was a couple years ago, and. Um, when I speak to you about songs getting you through something, that song really helped me push through that. It brought me closer to God. You know, all, I'm already, you know, very spiritual as well, you know, anyway, but that song definitely helped put me closer to God. It helped me get through that time. <clears throat> Brianna Marin is dope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Her voice excels, but your music excels mm-hmm. as well. You know, my mm-hmm. favorite Chief Valley project, 
Well, only have two projects of you, but the colored section is my shit. I keep telling you that every time I talk to you. I really love that project. You know what I'm saying? Oh, thank and and, and thank the you. elevation of Chief Valley from the colored section to the Hateful Eight to the two new singles out right now tell us that you're telling a story as you age or progress in the musical field. What was the hardest song you had to write and it made you sit down and really focus on your pen? Ooh, ooh, good one. Um... Probably Redemption. Um, I, I believe I told you this before. I had to write. I wrote four versions of that record. So um, I would definitely say that one. The beat challenged me when I first heard it because it was a very slow pace. And I wasn't exactly sure on how to approach it. So I had, like, a slow flow at first. The first the first three versions sound nothing like the last version of what you hear now. <laughs> it sounds nothing like it. And the crazy thing about it is the last version of the song came out of frustration because I did the other three and I recorded one. And I'm like, yo, this shit sound ass. You know? <laughs> I don't like how this shit sound. So I literally, out of frustration, went home that night and repinned it the way you hear it now. So um, it was definitely, that one gave me a big challenge. Because that, I'm not used to flowing to that type of track. It was um, mm -hmm. very slow, methodic. So, yeah. <clears throat> you know what's deep, though? Because, like, when I, everybody who's listening to this interview right now, y'all lost a good interview that we had before prior to this. So, <laughs> so I apologize to y'all for that because that was a great interview that we did. Damn the computer yeah. for, for eating it. But after I, we did the interview, I, I started going back and listening to some of your music. And, Wow, I want to. I want to. I want to say this to you because this is a high, a high compliment, but it's not something I, I say lightly. In the industry, you and Q Tip would have been dope together, yo. And Q Tip, yes. Oh my and God! The, wow. You, wow. And, <laughs> and, 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 and the reason why I said that is because the way you spit is different than some of the most average of hip hop and yeah, Trial Call Quest was different than the most average of hip hop. Let me put it to right. you this way. I would love to have heard you on Midnight Marauder Beats. Woo. What beats bring out the best in Chief Bally? Woo Oh my God, that one what you just said. It's like <laughs> lyrics to go, that's my shit too. Oh um, yeah, that's a classic. That's my joint, yo. Uh, uh, what? That's my shit. I gotta give you that um, instrumental then. What's good? <laughs> now, yeah, please go ahead. Please. I, I can find it. You know, it's my shit. So. Um, what do tracks bring the best out of me? Um, I'm really not um, tunnel vision when it comes to beats. I'm very well. You know what? Let me let me correct myself. I'm very picky. I'm very picky when it comes to tracks. I used to just rhyme on anything. I used to just rhyme on stuff that I love. When I started to realize that you can't do that as an artist, I had to start learning my tone and my voice and what mm -hmm. I sound good on and what mm. communicates to the listener better. It's not all about just me, because I over myself when I first started rapping and just started rapping it all. Oh, I'll I talk with that beat. I'm rapping on that. Fuck that. I love that beat. I'm going to kill that. And it, when you record it, it, it don't translate well. Yeah, you ripped it. Don't get me wrong. But it still has to sound appealing to the ear. Like, I'm, I'm all for that. Like, music has to, I don't know, it, it, it should be, easy flowing to the ear and shit, you shouldn't have to try hard to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I shouldn't have to force my, I shouldn't have to be screaming on tracks. I shouldn't be rapping on tracks that's louder than I am. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I count myself as a lyricist, so I want to be on tracks that you will actually hear what the fuck I'm saying. <laughs> like you actually right. hear my words. You mm -hmm. hear the punchlines and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's, B selection is very, very important to me. Um, I'm not super picky though. Don't get me wrong. Like, if a challenge step up and I got to do it, like for instance, that um, the track, the the mob track, the one I saw on for um Heritage Hip Hop, two bomb bar um, challenge. Absolutely, the um the Benny the Butcher joint. Yes. Truth be told, I like truth be told, I didn't like that beat, mm -hmm. but I still did it anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So stuff like that. You know, you guys just gotta adjust. <laughs> Yeah, that's the stuff that challenges us. And I want to give a shout out to Blues 360 Degrees, my man, who's, um, your co-host on the 420 Bally Hour show on A Squad Rebel Radio. He's the person who introduced me more to Mad Lib. He's the person who introduced wow. me to that side of hip hop. My man, shout out to Julius Pimpin, 
who has a project mm -hmm. on HeritageHipHop.com right now. If you're a member, check that out. He introduced me to Jay Dilla, Frank and Dank. So there's other sides of hip-hop that I got introduced to. What, what mm -hmm. opened you up to the other sides of hip-hop so you knew what beats are out there but not to use and how to use them? Like, who opened that lane for you, and how did they help you grow into hip-hop? Um, Ox, my, my man that was in the 8 Mile movie, he was, um, like I said, me and him have been rapping together since we were 15, so we did a lot of coaching of each other. Um, mm -hmm. He will tell you today that if I was not in his life, he wouldn't be rapping and vice versa. So um, right. it was him. You know, he's... um. You know, I, I got to get you his mixtape too, Karev. I got got a copy of his, of his old his mixtape from the um from the movie, it's okay. fucking bananas. Okay. But um, he was the one that li listening to him and, and and going through coaching with him, and when he got signed to his label with Interscope or whatever the case may be, he started learning how to um match his voice to the song and, and kind of like find pockets in the beat and flow to flow to certain tracks. And he was the one that basically taught me to stop rapping to every fucking thing. Like, I can't, you know, that's not cool. You should be trying to find what fits your voice. Rick, Rick Ross does it fucking great. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. He does it beautiful. Um, so that that was one of the biggest things with me. Um, blues as well, too, now that you mentioned them. Um, he, that's one of the reasons why I keep blues around is, one, because of his ear, and then, two, he's not afraid to disagree with him. Um, that's that's very important. one of the biggest that's one of the biggest reasons I keep him around, like, not keep him around like he a dog and no shit like that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, y'all grow together, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, and that's the biggest reason. He's not afraid to disagree with me. He's not afraid to tell me no. He's not afraid to say he doesn't like something that I like. You know what I'm saying? So that, and when he tells me those things, I'll, usually I go back and I'll, I'll go, oh, shit, right, let me check what the fuck he means. What is he talking about? Why are you saying this is better than this? And maybe I might find something that I didn't find before. So he's very instrumental in me doing a lot of homework and going into different producers and shit like that that I would have never, ever even looked at before. <clears throat> With hip-hop growing nowadays, and you hear so many people doing hip-hop, it kind of bugs me out to the point where how can the artist be an artist and make sure he's not being a participant in the, in the genre? What do you say? Um, how can an artist be an artist and not a participant in the genre? What do you mean? I personally believe hip hop is full of participants. Not, oh, not, not, not hip hop is full of participants and not artists. You have a lot of people who care for the art and will do it, but then you have a lot of people who just do it and don't care. They just put anything out or just hit a trend or they did, like I said, there'll be a trend or a fad setter. No, there'll be a fad setter instead of a trend setter. Samad Savage said it best. He said, I don't know when I make it when I have my own era. There was the Kanye era. There was the 50 era. There was a Dipset era. I want a Savage era. That's an artist to mm. me. Some people don't have errors, but that's an artist because they're striving for it. And then you have people who make a song like, 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 like West Coast shit where they just talk about being from somewhere, smoking Cali weed, and that's it. And it's not nothing. Right, right. You see know what I'm saying? So how do you right, right, make no, sure you stay in artist lane and not participant lane? Um, honestly, it's very, very hard because um, I'm a super duper fan of this shit first, um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I always say that. That's one of the reasons why I have a radio show. Like I'm a super duper fan of this shit first. So that does it. It becomes hard when you're when you're making songs and shit like that. Take yourself out of it and I'm um, just you know totally be that artist. However, what what I've learned is that. Um, Stick into what you do and just keeping a clear head on what you do. Like, it's almost like an assignment. <laughs> it's almost like if I'm sitting down making a record, if I'm sitting down making a song, it's almost like an assignment. Like, Chief Valley, I have to stick to this. Has take any, take everything that you would put, you know, your fandom out, out of it and just focus on what you're doing. Um, to agree with Samad Savage and also to add something else on to what he said too, because that was a great quote from him. I know when I made it, me personally, when I can stream income off of what I do, off of my art. Like, I don't, I tell my friends this all the time, I don't have to have a big record deal. I, I don't even want that anymore. You know what I mean? If I can create a fan base of how many or whatever amount of people and they're checking for me and supporting me and coming to my shows and I'm literally streaming and incoming, creating a career off of this, off of that, I'm good. <laughs> like, to me, I made it. That, at right. that point, I made it. That, that's the point. It doesn't have to be millions of stars. Don't get me wrong. That's, that's great, too. Don't get me wrong. However, 
to me, if I can, you know, make a streaming income or residuals off of my art, then to me, I made it. And if I can inspire a fan base, then I made it to me. That's my checkpoint. Now, that's awesome. But something that you said really resonated in artistry. Artistry, to me, is defined by how much time and effort you put into building your craft. Right. You build right. your craft as an MC and as a radio show host. The 420 Valley Show, for anybody who hasn't watched it or experienced it, it's on A-Squad Rebel Radio every Sunday at 7 p.m., right? Yes. Uh, and, um, 8 o'clock. Oh, we'll be back eight soon. Coronavirus got us down a little bit right now, but we'll be back. <laughs> yeah, but the thing about the show is that 420 Show has become one of the most preeminent staples in New Jersey hip-hop right now. Um, some people give me credit, heritage hip-hop and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not that guy, all right? So I'm going to take myself out because that doesn't count. I'm looking outside of heritage hip-hop because I can always big myself up. But your show, Blades and Bars, We Are Jersey, There's a, and, and others, there are many platforms. But your platform is different becomes because you're actually breaking records and giving feedback. You know, shout out to Tommy Ground Radio, too. They do it, too. But with oh, yours... Man. Yeah, but but with yours, it, it's you you do the interviews with them there, and you also plug into other sounds everywhere else. How does that keep you as a sharp artist and not just a person who plays records? Oh man, are you kidding me? Um, the competition is always um, there for me. I always, I'm I'm a, I'm a competitive I'm competitive when it comes to making songs and and and, and my craft. I'm not per se a battle rapper. I've battled. Don't get me wrong. I've I've won. Don't get me wrong. I have battled before, but that's not really my thing. And much respect to the battlers, because that's a fucking crap that's amazing to me. I'm mm -hmm. more so a song guy and creating something that's going to last. So um, so that when I hear, like, a Tamad Savage or Ed Maddox come to my show and hear how great those songs are, look, them boys put in work, bro. <laughs> like, they, they put in fucking work. Jay Wonder, that, like, these young doc um, chops, like, Gail, they put in work. And so when I hear these records, I'm, I take myself and I go, God damn, I wish I would have thought of that. That's number one. <laughs> <laughs> number two, I start studying stuff. Like, it's crazy, too, because I tell my wife this all the time. The way I listen to music versus the way the average person listens to music, and I think this is any artist, is totally different. Like, as a, as a fan, if I'm getting into it, I take all my opinions and all my stuff out of it, but... If I'm listening to it as an artist, and most of the time that's what I am, I'm listening to, oh, shit, how did he think of that flow? Where did he come up with that line? Oh, shit, damn, I should have thought of that. That's ill. Oh, what made him sing that punch? What made him sing that hook? Oh, he put auto-tune on that part? That's dope. Oh, he should have put auto-tune on that part. That would have been better. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm, like, in my head, <laughs> figuring out, like, okay, this motherfucker has a hit. What did he, how did he achieve that? That's fucking amazing. So, yeah, it, it becomes difficult, but sometimes, you know, being an artist and having a radio show, it, it's the competitive nature in me. It inspires the fuck out of me. Sometimes I go home and, and write a new record, <laughs> you know, just from that interview or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> how do you think hip-hop is today when it comes to competition? Do you think people are really out there competing, or do you think they're just doing music? Uh, well... Um, I don't know, yo. It's, it's 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 crazy because I think I think the ones that are truly truly doing this art form are are, are still in it to compete in some way, shape, or form. But I don't know. You got a lot of that people out here still just trying to compete with this money. You know, I, I you know I got this much more money than you. I look, look at my racks and da 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 da. I sold this da 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 da. And not forgetting that that does not mean that you're dope. <laughs> like, yeah. it means that you're creative. You, you're creative and you made something that popped. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Um, but there's, and no slight to children, but there's children, five-year-olds that can do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a skill there. So um, I believe, like, the true, true art form and the true, you know, heads for this hip-hop shit is still in it for the competition. I still compete. Yeah, I do. I got to give you respect as an artist who competes because you had a versus battle against another MC from Jersey. Shout out to Chops uh, the Savior. Yes, now, sir, my dude. Yeah. Now, 
reviewing that, because of course I record everything, <laughs> Re- reviewing that, reviewing that battle, or well, so-called battle, it was, it was between friends, it wasn't a battle, but no, I re- you're right, you're right. Re- re- reviewing it, I really did my dirt digging on some of the comments that was in the battle. And some of the ba- some of the people in the, in the comments made it like it was going to be a landslide, one side over the other. Right. And as the battle went on, people was like, "Oh shit, I looked at this wrong. Yo, this man right. is dope. He just as dope as you. He may be better than you." What did that battle show you, and how did it, how does that make you a better artist? I need to get to work. That's what it showed me. <laughs> Okay. Straight up, I need to get to work. Nobody don't know who I am. I need to get to work. I need to put out more stuff. I need to share more. I need to promote more. Um, yeah, like that. That's literally what I took away from that. Um, I appreciated it. Don't get me wrong. And I mm-hmm. literally used that. Honestly, the battle to me was that vehicle for people to hear our music. Like um, I didn't even take it as a battle until the day of. <laughs> like mm-hmm. we started really getting into it. I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, because I know top fashion shit. So once mm-hmm. I was in it, then I was kind of like getting into the competition. But up until that point, my dude, really, it was just a showcase in my head. It was two great artists are going to get to show their fans, you know, my fans are going to get to hear Chops and, and vice versa. And then we're going to gain fans from this. So, yeah. But it, it definitely showed me that, absolutely, I need to get work. <laughs> That's interesting that you said that because what is a Chief Valley fan, you think? How would you define your fan base? Hmm. My fan base, my fan base is true to me. Um, I, I've noticed a lot of people that um are fans of me are friends of mine too, and that's mm-hmm. literally what I want. Like um, I turned my regular Facebook page into a fan page and just kept my name on it because I felt as like my whole brand is Corey, is the guy you see walking to the stores, the guy you see. Coming over to your crib for game night. It's the guy you see you inviting to a barbecue. It's that nigga you see that'll bang for you if you in a fight outside. And, he, and I happen to be walking across the street and somebody jumping you or some shit. It's the same dude. So I didn't really want to make it to the point where it seemed like it's two different people. Oh, Chief Valley is the, you know, he has to put on his hat. And I turn into Chief Valley like Jim from fucking from the night 80s cartoon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. I, I, I believe. My fans are literally the people that can see me, touch me, and, and know me every day on a regular basis. Like, my fans can tell you stuff about me that my family would know. That's, mm. that's, that's the cheat. You know, when I ask other artists this, and I don't really ask them this on the record, but you, I had to because you're special. I'm going to tell you why. When I ask people who are their fans, people really don't have an answer. They just think about people who buy their music, and that doesn't make them a fan. That makes them an investor. And some, yeah, some fans are not investors. Some fans are people that genuinely love you, and investors are people who just look for things out of you. It's a quote that says, yeah, it's a quote that says, uh, some of your worst enemies sit next to you at your table. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And it's very deep when it comes to the artistry because some people will appreciate your art, and then some people will just try to take from your art. As an artist, you are naturally very giving. What do you want people to walk away with when they hear your music? Every one of my songs um, have this overtone of "You made it." We, it's not that bad. We, we, we gonna get out of this. Um, we've been through the bottom, and now we, we, we're on top. Every single one of my songs has one of those overtones. Every single one. If you really dive into the lyrics and listen to it, it's all about. It's all about how life can kick you in the ass and, and still you can come out of it okay. And you, you, and you don't have to do what society tells you that you, that we're supposed to be doing. Like, just because you're black, you don't have to be a drug dealer. Just because you're black and you live in the hood doesn't mean you have to be shooting and killing somebody. Right. You can be a computer nerd and be dope and still be a cool person. <laughs> and still be out here in the streets on some chill shit and have respect. You can be a regular graphic designer. You can be a regular guy. <laughs> like, you don't have to put on this mask or this, this facade. I have this new song um, coming up on my um, new project called Bruce Wayne, and it's literally about that. It's about, it's about wearing masks and, and pretending to be something that you're not just to appease everybody else. So 
So, yeah, that's one of the main things that people should be coming away with from my records. <clears throat> so, there's Chief Valley was a superhero. Who, who, who would he be? Who emulates Chief Valley as a superhero in the books now? Oh, that's a good one. Um, shit. Probably, I would say Batman. Probably Batman. Um, Bruce was super torn. Bruce, um, as wearing that mask and, 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 and the thing with Bruce Wayne was is that he had a he had a cold that he had to live by, but he was also torn with that cold because he was starting to find out that that cold he needed to break a few times. <laughs> he, needed, he needed to kill some 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 bad guys. <laughs> like, so um, I believe yeah, that match sometimes you you you, you got to know when to put it on and not when to wear. So yeah, I believe Bruce Wayne. That's that's a close faction. Out of all okay. Caucasian, out of all Caucasian superheroes, Batman is my favorite. And the reason why is because he's the most believable. Because there's a lot of people in our community that go through hell but try to make their lives better. And, and right. all of Batman's villains are personality traits of, schizo of some type of personality disorder. Whether you're crazy, okay. you're aristocracy, you're kleptomaniac, you do a dual personality, right. bipolarism. Those are Batman's villains. Right. Very true. That, Very but true. Batman always wins, which pisses me off, but... It's a staple of the Batman mythos is that your human element will always win and conquer over yeah. things that beat you down. What's your new song? Huh? Nobody could beat a prepared. I always hear in the comic books, nobody can beat a prepared um, Batman. If he's prepared, dog, it's, a, it's over. <laughs> and, that, and that's the human element. The man who fa fails to plan plans to fail. Exactly. That, that, but with your new song, Stay Winning, since Batman always wins, what are you beating, and how are you telling people that life is okay through that song? I, 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 now, that one, I'm just having a fun like something else. Um, I'm playing. Um, that one is basically on some, like, um, when I when I created that record, it was, one, I wanted to have fun, and then, two, um, just coming off of redemption, I really wanted to get back into my rap bag and, and um, flow fast and just throw off my skill. Also, the premise of Stay Winning is that if you listen to the hook, I'm doing this, I do that, my neighbor's looking out for me, I'm blessed. Like, I'm, I don't have stepped in, I don't done some fucked up shit, or I don't done what's defined as fucked up shit, but for some reason I still keep coming out on top. I stay winning. So mm. literally, it's that still with that same message of, it's okay, <laughs> you're going to come out on top. Just keep on that road and keep pushing and keep pushing. It's still there. Um, I believe even in the second verse, I start touching on some of the things, um, like with my parents back in the day. Me and my mom didn't have the greatest relationship. My dad died at an early age, and he was in and out of prison. I start mm -hmm. touching on little things that should have destroyed me, but I stay winning. <laughs> I stay never losing, never slipping. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, once again, from the last interview that we did, I really want the people to hear this, because this was from the last interview that was so dope. What is your victory in hip hop? Let you know that you've done it and you've done it well. Oh yeah, um, the biggest victory we've had, I've had so far is when my best friend was in um, Eight Mile. Um, it was the number one movie in the world. Like at that point, I mean, even though it was years ago, don't get me wrong, but at that point, it was like we made it. Like when you've been with somebody and been in and out of groups and winning count countless talent shows and watch somebody develop and grow. To see somebody you care about that much get that much big of a win, you feel like you won yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. You took me on tour with him. I toured with 50 Cent. I opened for Big Timers. Um, I was a hype man for a little while. Shit, I got to meet Proof. Do a record. I did a record with Proof um, before he passed away. Rest in peace. Made a friend because that was my guy. Um, shit, I got to listen to Stan before it came out. <laughs> Literally right when it was fresh, damn near out of the studio. You know what I mean? So it's an inkling in time for me, whereas um, I'm always attached to. Anytime that shit come on VH1, I get to say I was an extra in the movie. I was on set. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that, that was a huge victory for me. Also, the radio show, too. Um, I never thought I could do something like that. And I actually used to pretend like I had a radio show when I was a kid and, and record Red Alert on my tapes. <laughs> a little <laughs> tissue <laughs> Shit. Um, I used to do that in my room and shit. So it's kind of like, you know, a dream coming to fruition for me. So the radio show as well, too. That's a big victory. Bro, let me tell you something. 
hip hop is weird because it's the only genre of music that you have to live to understand. Like, you don't have to sing to understand people can sing. You don't have to pick up a guitar to know rock and roll or, or hard rock. But you have to live a certain way to truly understand hip hop. And mm. you saying that you did it like a fake radio show prepped you. Like, you was already set up for a radio show and you didn't even know you was prepping yourself up for it. You know what I'm saying? Your life, facts, facts, deep. Right, so, right, right. So, that, so that, that's, in, that's living the culture and engulfing the culture, whether you are rapping, DJing, b-boying, breakdancing, beatboxing, or whatever. You were already part of the culture. But as hip-hop has evolved, how does your show incorporate the embodiment of hip-hop and keeps, besides rapping, DJing, and producing, how does it keep those other pillars alive? What are you introducing through your show? Um, I want to start having some graffiti artists. I've actually reached out to um, because I've had out there who's an artist, um, who's an artist, artist as well, not just music artist. Incredible paint. You know, he's in, he's amazing. Um, and Valley Hour did a live expose from his um, shop, the Celest, the Celest, Celestory. And um, mm -hmm. Montclair, when he was, um, um, all we need is a little light under the sun exhibit. So. Mm -hmm. We want to be doing stuff like that, too. It's like, you know where to just focus on just music. And, and folks, we don't just focus on just hip-hop, too. I have a house music artist up there. I've had a Spanish artist up there. It's literally just about, you know, the art, form, the art period, you know. So I want to start introducing break dancers. I want to have some graffiti artists. Remember, we had Ty Rainey on the show, who's a comedian. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're trying to reach out all all fans, yo. I just want to have, you know, when you come on the Valley Hours, smoke some good smoke, talk about something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have a great day. <laughs> but, yeah. That, that's dope, because part of what I was getting to was actually that. You're a 420 herbologist and specialist and educator. And as the yeah. pillars of hip-hop went from five to eight or nine, entrepreneurialism and health has come into hip-hop and a lot of people are going into the 420 business. Some people think, yeah, I'm going to just go smoke a whole bunch of weed. But then they learn there's different strands, and different strands have different purposes. How has you doing your show educated you further on marijuana? And what do you, where do you want to take that aspect of the hip-hop culture? Oh, my God, yeah. So definitely um, we, want, we want to beef up the education piece a little bit more going into the next season when we come back. We do it now, folks, but... We really want to turn it up more because I'm starting to see that it's really helping people, as um, Craig just said. So my story with, with that whole situation is I, I used to suffer from Crohn's disease um, until one day I went to the doctor and my doctor says, well, it's been about four years. It's not there anymore. What? Why? He said, you know, you said you smoke marijuana, right? I was like, yeah. He said, well, you went in remission. He said so. Boom. From that day on, I said, you know what? The stigmatism needs to be gone. It needs to be lifted. We need to educate versus mm -hmm. telling people, you know, versus judging. You know what I mean? Make your judgment after you figure out the facts. <laughs> Make your judgment after you get do your research. Like, mm -hmm. don't just judge all the facts of what society has been telling you to do all this entire time. And you already know that society tells us to do fucked up shit. <laughs> you do some research. But so... We're doing my research and then really digging into it and then also dealing with um, mental health in my home, seeing how certain strands help my kid, my daughter, seeing how um, certain strands act against certain things with her and how it just affects it. It's just so medicinal. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, to, to deny people of this is it's just outrageous. I have a freaking knee tendon problem in my right knee, and CBD oil helps me every day. I rub it on my fucking knee, and it, it totally gets rid of the pain. <laughs> like, totally. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's, just, it, it's a shame and it's just sad that it has taken this long for society to just see that this product or this, you know, this plant that's been put here on the earth has medicinal use. And I just feel as though the world needs to know. Let's, figure, let's give some history to the people out there listening. For all y'all who like to smoke weed, people hated weed because they couldn't tax it. And not only that. Yeah. We marijuana was considered evil because in the in the jazz era, jazz meant sex. So they equated the horns to people gyrating and being on each other and smoking weed to have sex. That's why in the early fifties, yep. marijuana was said to make people have sex. They didn't want people having children. History fact yep. for you, just to let you know. Yep. 
to add on to that too, do you know why they called it marijuana? Because that, you know, it's called cannabis. But they actually yeah. called it marijuana to stigmatize mm-hmm. it with Mexicans. Because back then the Mexicans were they were being marketed as bad drug dealers, da 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 da. So to market this to the society as bad, we're gonna name it marijuana. We're gonna name it after something that you already have a stigmatism about and you already think is bad. <laughs> so we're gonna name it that as the slang word in this when they pump that into society. It's fucked up, yo. It's fucked up. And that that history nugget was brought to you by Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a dummy. Learn your history. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not the Mexicans that made marijuana bad. There you go. <laughs> they were. Yeah. Shout out to all our international hip hop stars that's becoming known on Heritage Hip Hop. And we were, we're talking about international music now because you were signed to the Champagne International Music Group. Shout out to Tanya Champagne and the CIMG movement. How's that going for you? Um, it's going great. We're doing some big, big things. Um, we're going to be making some um, announcements soon about the um, the movement and the uh, music group soon, so I'm kind of on a hush-hush about it. But um, we have, uh, all I can say is we got a big tour coming up. So that's that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> well, um, when, you go, other, when you go overseas, when you go overseas, uh-huh. I, I, I pray that you meet some of these great artists that we've met on Heritage Hip Hop and y'all could collab. Because what you did with Brianna Marin is dope, and I would pray to get an interview with her one day. But Oh, man. I've been touch with her. Trust me. I got you. <laughs> thank you. But there, but, but there are some people who, when they hear Chief Valley, they get inspired. And there's people who can bring the best out of Chief Valley. Who has brought the best out of you on the record? And behind the scenes to make you the artist that you are and what you're becoming soon. Um, um, I'm, shout out to Fonzo and shout out to Jersey Hope. Um, my squad 2.0. Um, I had a separate project with Jim as well where we did a few songs. I've never seen the light of day, unfortunately. But um, that was one of the situations in my life because I had just come out of writing um, the color section. I just finished that album. And that album took me five years to make. Almost, actually, no, seven. <laughs> it took me seven years to make. Um, because it was so emotionally draining and I was trying to put so much into it, um, sometimes I'll be, I'll be thinking that I'm an empath because I, get, I literally get drained after writing emotional shit. Like, I don't, I get tired. I don't even want to talk to nobody. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. So what happened is that I started hooking back up with Jay after the um, color section and, um, he had his idea. He wanted to, you know, he wanted us to put together and do a collab album. He already had Fonz. We already had Hope as an artist. Um, so those boys, when I tell you, first and foremost, they're nasty as on, they're nasty as hell on the mic. They're ill as fuck. Um, but being in a being in a room with sharks inspired me. It made me become a shark. You know, it brought the, it brought it back out because at that point I was almost like, you know what, I'm done. I can't think of shit else. Maybe I was only supposed to make one album. Maybe that was it. Maybe that's supposed to be my legacy. That's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, they they definitely inspired the fuck out of me. And, and one of the reasons why I made The Hate Late is this. But it's energy from them. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily ideas, but just energy from being in a room with them and just starting back and forth. Um, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> We're going to talk about the master in his domain right now because what you said kind of threw me off a little bit because, and I mean in a bad, I mean in a good way, because when you're the master of your domain, you're very low key, but you're highbrow at the same time. I want to, I want to bring you back to a show that you did that I had the privilege to um, record is on Heritage Hip Hop YouTube, everybody. Go to the live performances playlist and you will see live performances of your future favorite new artist that you've just been introduced to. And Chief Valley has uh, a performance from a show done in Newark, Newark, New Jersey, Brick City Stand Up, and and you were on stage. People didn't even know who you were. They said your name wrong and everything. But when you performed, not only did you take the stage, a lot of the quote-unquote younger generation saw you and their mouths dropped because they didn't know what bars were until Chief Valley touched the stage. Wow, what does it mean to be the master of the domain and to walk away with other MCs just just bowing their heads like, "Yo, you nice"? What does that mean to you? Oh, it means everything because again, I'm a fan first. So, um, 
that means everything. Like, um, I was just telling Blues this the other day. Like, one of the biggest things that um, I think separates me from everybody else, I mean, I don't know if everybody else thinks like this, but I never look at people in my circle as my competition. Like, I never look at Snipes as competition. I don't look at Samad as competition. I don't look at Young Zayt. Not that they are at competition, don't get me wrong, but I'm looking at Hov. Like, when I write a rap, I'm battling Jay-Z in my mind. When, I'm, when I write a rap, I'm, by, I'm battling Eminem in my head. <laughs> like, I'm battling those guys. Like, those are my, those are the people that I'm trying to destroy. Like, the, like my, my niggas that's around here, if anything, I'm trying to help y'all win. <laughs> like, right. like, you know what I mean? Competition-wise, again, I'm going to take you back to what I said earlier. Don't get me wrong. I will hear a record from one of these guys. I'm like, fuck, I wish I would have thought of that, too. But it's different mm-hmm. from me sitting down and writing a verse going, oh, no, fuck that. Jay's going to hear this shit, and that nigga going to lose his <laughs> So that's very important to me. I'm a fan first, so that, yeah, I, I need to impress that. I need to impress my peers. I need people that do the same thing that I do for me to get off stage and go, yo, that shit was fire. We need to do a record, my nigga. <laughs> like, period. So, yeah. yeah. How does ageism affect you in hip-hop? Say that again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How, does a- How does ageism affect you in hip-hop? Let me give you some background while you think about that. You're in the middle of a movement. You have elder MCs who are still rapping because that's what they do. You have younger MCs who, who are introduced to the genre, and some are nice and some are growing, but they're learning their voice. You're kind of in the middle because you're not an OG and you're not a YG. You're just like in that middle thing, and you can swing either way. How does that hit you when it comes to ageism in hip-hop? Oh, big time, bro. Um, it's one of the biggest, one of the biggest things I battle. Um, not because I'm, a, I'm ashamed of how old I am. It's not, not none of that shit. It's because um, sounding, sounding authentic and not sounding generic is important. So mm-hmm. you'll have a lot of older artists trying to still sound young and not just being true to themselves. That's, I, that I don't fuck with. <laughs> you know what I mean? I try not to. That, that's the part that I struggle with because I don't want to become that guy. I don't want to mm-hmm. become a novelty of myself. You know what I mean? So, yes. but then also I don't want to just have one lane of listeners either. Like um, me and Blues argue about this shit all the time when he's picking out beats for me. I'm like, yo, get out that boom bat, bro. Like I fuck with boom, don't get me wrong. <laughs> like it's pure hip hop. But I, I need you to start, I need you to think different. I need I need us to go a different way, but somewhere else. Get, play me some rock and roll. Play me some jazz. Play me something, even with a trap beat. I know you hate it, but still, like you know what I mean. Push me, because if you don't push me, I'm never gonna be. I'm never gonna get to where I need to go. I'm just gonna always be rapping a certain type of way. Beats push me, and and, and production pushes you to do different things with your flows and shit like that. So. Um, yeah, I struggle, not struggle with that, but that's very important to me because, look, again, like I said, I don't want to be that old guy trying to sound young. And I always say this too, Rev. I always say, um, like, you got the, like, older rappers in the game and shit, like Nazis, even Busta Rhymes and shit like that, and, you know, Hope, like, they're trendsetters. They're not following trends. There's a big difference. Mm-hmm. They shouldn't be out here to sound like the baby. The baby's mm-hmm. supposed to be trying to talk like them. <laughs> facts. That's facts. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that, I pay attention to shit like that. I, I totally do. Kiss will put out a new record. It still sounds like Kiss. Kiss ain't trying to sound like fucking, uh, I hate to use his name again, the baby, because that's my nigga. I fuck with him heavy. But, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. he, he to, you know what I mean? Like, so, that's important to me, big time. But isn't that the thing that kind of makes hip hop weird? Because people will always try to put you in the box, but the box is bigger than their perception. Because, like, like think, think about this: Jay Z's from New York. Big Pimpin does not sound like a New York record, but that's a big record. Right. If you look at Nas, Nas does the same stuff, but he gets criticized, like with the Al Jarreau wow. rap song, where he says, "Y'all can do all that. I want to bend the genre by doing something that no one has ever tried or done." So when you go to bend, your pivot has to be on point so you can go left, right, but always stay in your lane. What is Chief Bowie's lane, and how do you define it? 
See, I'm going um, to answer your question, but I'm also comment, kind of comment on what you just said, too. Okay. Um, I think what transcends all of that, like, as long as the music is good, like, because if the music is undeniably dope, you forget about, oh, shit, damn, why not make this type of record? <laughs> like, fuck, this shit is hard. Like, don't let it in, what's your price? When I first heard that back in the day when I was younger, I ain't gonna front with you. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, this is that, like, you know what I mean? Like, I ain't gonna yeah. lie. Then this that fucking record is a classic. It's a fucking classic. And even when you break it down and listen to it, the nigga's flowing. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. He's on that shit. So, um... But we'll be, I'm sorry. What was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> how do you, being that you pivot, when you say rock and roll and stuff like that, how do you pivot but you still keep your lane? What is your lane? Define your lane. Oh, okay. Um, again, staying true to what I told you earlier, my overall message is always getting through and, and making sure that you come out on top and, and, telling, my, and telling my listener that it's never that bad. Like, you're always going to win. So that's always my lane and sticking to that. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, but, like, I, tr I try not to do nothing that Corey Davis wouldn't do. Like, I, if, I, if I'm not going to walk around, if Corey Davis don't walk around saying it's not, well, if Corey Davis don't walk around saying, let's, you know, one of, one of these young words that the kids say, I'm not going to try to put that shit in my verse just because I'm trying to make sure that a certain demographic listens to it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah. like just because everybody's talking about bird off and, 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 and Gucci in their verse, I don't own none of that shit. <laughs> like, yeah, I got so you. Corey Davis is going to be, what you see is what you get. Like, if you, Corey Davis, if you see Corey Davis drinking tequila all the time, nine times a ten, I put that in a verse. You dig what I'm saying? So I try to keep it as true to who I am as much as possible. You know, like, I don't, I would never want somebody to listen to my verses and then see me in person and go, oh, that nigga's stunting. You know, like, he ain't that. You know, that's why I stopped rapping about guns. I used to do that whole gun buck shit and talk about my gun do this and my gun do that back in the day and shit like that. So I started realizing, yo, dog, you don't have, one, you don't even own a gun. <laughs> yeah. Number one, you don't even own a gun. You can get one, of course. You know, and if shit go down, I know how to find people to handle that, but keep it funky, dog. You can't do all of that shit. <laughs> and you don't want the nigga out there to go, let me find out if he can. Keep it funky. Keep it real. You don't want that. So, you know, staying true to myself is always the overall message. <clears throat> and staying true to yourself, same. Facts. And keeping it real with you, man, this interview is good. Like, I can't front. The last one was great. And this one, I think we still hear them strides. But before we really put a cap on this, please give everybody your uh, social media and how they can listen to your music and support you. Absolutely. Um, my um, IG is 420Chief, that's C-H-E-E-F. My um, Gmail, which you could, any, anybody hit me up fan-wise, please hit me up, C-H-E-I-F 420 at com. I'm available on Spotify, um, Amazon, Google Play, pretty much everywhere. I have uh, the, my singles, Redemption, and Play Form are available right now. The Hateful Eight Deluxe album is coming out soon. Um, we'll have an extra five records on it. But, however, the Hateful Eight Album one is available now on SoundCloud for free. Um, download that. Or you can hit me up on my YouTube page, which is Chief Valley. And I am also have um, a website and merchandise coming out soon, too, within the next week or so. So you guys will be able to wear that valley and be the loudest in the game, just like your boy. Bye. <laughs> That's right. So for everybody out there, remember, it's always good to stream but it's better to purchase. And if Chief Valley is somebody that you really believe in, please purchase the record. You can go to uh, any music platform, and whenever it says purchase, you can use a dollar to get candy, scratch-offs, bottles of water, whatever, but you can also use a dollar to ensure that you're supporting a movement and giving yourself the opportunity to get more movement and more music back. So please invest in these artists. Now, being that this is your second time on Heritage Hip Hop, we got to do the rapid-fire questions. Now, there were certain questions I didn't get to ask you the first time that we're going to ask you now. And I've skewed even more of these questions to make them even better for you this time. All right. <laughs> Here you go. You ready? Yep, yep. All right. I think I asked you this before, but we're going to do it again just to prep. What album is Chief Bally and not one that you've made? 
Ooh, that was a joke. You never asked me that. What oh. valley is what? What album is Chief Valley, but it's not an album that I made? That's right. Ooh, that's a fucking good one. Um, huh. Recently, I've been doing this influence um, album thing online, mm-hmm. whereas I've been putting up covers of um, things that have influenced my musical taste throughout the years. I'll, definitely one of those albums. So, an Chief Valley album. You know what? Good Kid, Mad City. Ah, that's a deep one. Okay. You know what I like about you? You actually are not afraid to give the younger MCs their props. Because why be in Corday? He was like, yo, this is going to be a classic. Yo, listen to this dude. If it wasn't for you, I would have never listened to it. So I got to give you props for that. Because you do have the ear to keep the culture alive. And you, you, you I can actually see you in these, in these albums. So, so salute to you for that. Right. Yo, my nigga, when is the last time you picked up an album and it said, uh, only listen to this, uh, 18 and younger? When is the last time you picked up an album and said, you have to be a certain age to hear this? That's, that's a good point. Like, that's a good point. <laughs> like, this is music. Um, yeah, definitely good kid in that city. Okay, that's, that's, that's an excellent point. Because personally, if you look a certain way, I'm not going to listen to your album. If you got red hair and beads, fuck you. I'm not listening to your shit. Uh, I can't do it. So I, I got you. Yeah. I, I, I got you. I got you. But certain shit just turned me off from the door. <laughs> now what if that's not? Nah, hold up. Now what if that red be- that dude that you got the red beads in the hair? You didn't know he had read that shit, but you heard his record first. That's different. Three of that's three different. First. I said if you show, right, you said right. pick, you said picked up an album. That means I'm seeing it. Oh, true, and true. Gotcha. I can't. I can't. Right. Yeah, I can't front. Certain album covers turn me the fuck off. I can't. I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, so, like, 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 that's another thing I wanted to ask you in your rapid fire question is because you said you are impasse at times where emotions could come through in your wreckage, right? Yeah. What is the art that feeds your emotions the most to make you creative? Hmm. Used to be movies. Dance, I'm finding, inspires the fuck out of me. Um, okay. Your dance. It's, it's really, it's odd, too. I made Parachutes, the director of Parachutes, literally off of um, watching, um, I used to watch So You Think, I still do, actually. I watch So You Think You Can Dance with my wife. We're avid fans of that shit. And um, mm-hmm. it was a dance that really moved me. It was a contemporary ballet dance. It really, really moved me. And one of the lyrics in the song had something about Parachutes. And I, when I tell you, kid you not, I turned the TV off and wrote that song in 20 minutes. <laughs> Based off of the dance and just being moved from it, the whole shit came to me at once. Um, and I find that a lot, that a lot of dancers, watching the dancers do stuff, it, it really inspires me. So, yeah, I'll say dance. <clears throat> so then I'll challenge you. Like you did the 10 albums in 10 days, do 10 movies in 10 days and nominate me first. And let's see what movies inspire people, not just their music. Ooh, right. that's a good one. Okay. All right, so we're right. done with the other one. If I don't up the the challenge to twenty now. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Start having, start okay. having well, fun with it. When you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go to I the next you. question, which is you told me before that Redman is the person that you would like to collab with the most, right? Yep. On Chief, on Chief Valley's dream album, who's on it and who's doing the beats? How many features? Who how how would you make this album? And what would you title it? Um, and it could be dead or alive. No restrictions. Ooh, no restrictions. Dead or alive. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, album title: The Only Child. Mm-hmm. Um, how many tracks? Twelve records. Twelve tracks. Twelve tracks. Fourteen on the deluxe. Fourteen okay. or fifteen on the deluxe. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe about four to five features. And it would be? Maybe it'll leave it a little bit more. It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough to... You like, see, the thing is, I don't work like that. It's tough for me to see and kind of technically put that shit... Because if, if, if the song is dope, shit... And if, if, if I already got five features and the song is dope with another person featuring, I'm not going to be like, no, fuck that. We're not putting it on the record. I already got five features. No, fuck that. Let the music live. Yo, put that shit on the record. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so... Okay. It's hard for me to say that I... 
I won't just stick to a certain amount of features. Okay, um, well then, who would you like to put on your project with you? Dream project, no restrictions. Who would you like to do something with on a whole project? Oh my God, Kendrick, Hove, um, that's one, that's two. Kendrick, Hove, I definitely, Griselda. <laughs> okay. Griselda. Um, those niggas is rapid right now, bro. Definitely Griselda, yo. Mm. Um, People be surprised when I say this, Drake. Mm, not, not all surprised. Um, I see it in you. Travis Scott. Mm -hmm. Travis Scott. Um, Two Chains. Is, is, uh, I love him. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know what? I would love to have a record where I'm just with a bunch of classic, not classic, but just veteran MCs like Meth, um, Jada, Fab. Just put on one record though, like we kind of like um, Johnny Blaze or one of those type of records. Like I always wanted to do one of those type big cipher records, yo, with um, mm, okay. some real heavy weight. Um, now like people on hooks, like I would love to do a song with Mary. I would love to do a song with Faith. I would love to do a song with Summer Walker. I think she's amazing. Um, Janelle Janae Aiko is freaking amazing. Um, I want to do a song with Stevie Wonder. <laughs> she would be yeah, higher. Mm -hmm. Fucking fire. Um, Producer-wise, you know, and there's more people to that, too, but I know we're limited on time. Swiss Beats, Kanye West, Mad Lib, Knife Wonder, um, 40, from um, Drake Camp, OVO. OVO. You know? Okay. Yeah. Um, Beethoven, Hit Maker, Hit Seekers. Um, Justice League is fire, too. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that would be kind of a wish list. Definitely Swiss Beats. I, I believe I mentioned them already, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, see, that's the reason why I ask these questions. Oh, let me get Tim on But the reason why I ask these questions is because in hip hop, so many people put you in a box and stigmatize you before they even get to appreciate the art. You're either the gangster rapper, conscious rapper, Christian rapper, street rapper, trap rapper, all, all these things instead of being known as an artist and musician. What is the right. difference between the box and the broad stroke of artistry? Um, limit, being limitless, formless, um, a shapeshifter. Um, when you're in that box, man, is you, you're, you're so, and I hate that shit too because art fans, not fan, well, yeah, fans put you in this box and then certain artists feel like they have to stay there or they're going to lose their fan base or they're going to lose their, you know, the, the revenue or whatever the case may be. When you're technically, you're damaging the art by doing that. Artists, and art is literally formless. That's the definition. <laughs> it's up to the mm -hmm. artist's interpretation of what it is. You know what I mean? Like, I've seen paintings where it's just a fucking blot of paint on it, but then four or five people will walk past and see something totally fucking different, and I'm like, well, damn. <laughs> 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 Damn black, but you just say me because that shit's totally different. You know what I'm saying? So music still transcends things in that same exact way. So by by putting an artist in that box, man, you're, you're not doing the music any good. And, you, and trust me, you're not getting the full potential of that artist if you do so. Facts. So I'm gonna ask you a hard question because Chief Valley is more high on a, he's a, he's higher level thinker than a higher level observer which means you think high, but you see regular. And that's a very high compliment, because if you thought regular, but you see high, that means you're crazy. Let me put, let me paint the picture. Yeah, let me paint the picture. The most high has the power to separate the soul from the spirit. And in, 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 in our understanding of life, your soul and your spirit are almost the same thing. What does music accomplish for you? Is it your soul or is it your spirit? My soul. Explain why. My soul, because um, it's healing. It's healing. Okay. Um, it's literally I can listen to a song and um, or uh, even uh, just a group of songs and it it, it heals. It, it makes you feel better. It it, it makes you feel sad. It, it makes you feel accomplished. It makes you feel like you made it. You stay winning. It, it's you know what I mean. It's 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 food for the soul. And I hate to, you know, sound cliche, but um, 100%, that's what it is. E even writing, to me, is, is therapeutic. Like, um, 
I told Blues recently, and he recently, my, 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 my fellas, my crew, that if I don't go through anything, there would be no artist. If my life was just hunky fucking dory and I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth, like, I'll probably, okay, maybe I might be an artist and just talk about that um, uh, materialistic bullshit that don't even matter, but to me, I probably wouldn't be an artist because literally it's a, it's a therapy for me. I needed to talk about my mom and what I went through with my mom and, and, and the drug taking and all of that type of shit. I needed to talk about that. You know what I mean? If not, I probably would be fucking killing somebody or I'm going to try to kill myself. So, um, yeah, without those things, the artist wouldn't be here. <laughs> he wouldn't exist. <clears throat> that's dope. And that's very, very key because, like I said to most people, I made a song back in the day myself, and I don't claim to be a rapper or MC. Look, I just did music. And, and one of my songs, I talked about something very heavy I had to deal with. And it wasn't until people heard that song that they really realized that, yo, you go through a lot and you don't talk about it. That mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes your smile is not because you're happy. Your smile is to help to get people away from you so you can deal with your own demons in peace. You know what I mean? Right. Which, which is very, right. very key. Which is very key to hip hop because hip hop was bought was born out of pain, out of loss, whether it was physical loss, murder, suicide, economic loss, theft, thievery, socialism, like I said, economic, right. Right. everything. What is the biggest pain that moves your art forward? Uh, um, huh. Seeing people, seeing people that go through what I went through and or seeing people that are still going through what I go through and don't feel as though they can talk about it and don't feel as though that they're being accepted or they, or you know what really gets me is seeing somebody that's an artist and feeling as though they got to do, do their art form a certain type of way just to fit in. That's what really gets me. Um, I was just having a conversation with Zop recently when I was over his house recording. Um, by the way, they got a killer collab coming too, by the way. Um, and it's, it's, that's my nephew. So he's in a room with him and his dad. And you already know Ox is his dad, and Ox is a monster. So um, we was all discussing, you know, doing a song together, three of us. And so a beat came up. I already had a verse already on deck for it that fit perfectly to it. Nay, um, um, Ox, um, per se, he um, started going through his notes, and he had an ill-ass verse to it. So we both spit our verses. And you could see on my young nephew... <laughs> the pressure, you can see him go, oh, shit. <laughs> he even said, he was like, I got to follow up behind y'all. <laughs> and don't, and fuck, Doc ain't no slouch. Don't get that fucked up in any way. Doc is nice as fuck. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. he's nice. Um, so it was cute. And, and, and what he said to me was, he goes, um, He's like, Uncle, I don't know, you know, I might take a little time with this. Usually I, I bang out verses. Like, I usually could bang it out in like 20 minutes. So just give me time. I'm like, yo, you ain't got to apologize. That's the best stuff is when you take your time. Don't feel as though that you got to, is that you have to shape shift yourself to this expectation that you think we have already in our head. Like, don't stop trying to live up to the fact that you always write verses in 20 minutes. Okay, great, fantastic. But some songs you you're gonna need to take a couple some time on, and don't beat yourself up for that. So though that's the thing that I'm talking about, like trying to live up to certain expectations and trying to be something that society thinks you're supposed to be, versus being yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's the stuff mm -hmm. that kind of you know. You, you know what's dope? What you said it kind of put me in another perspective. T. Valley does not make hip hop music; he makes life music. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. Uh, Kanye West called it Getting Out Our Dreams, good music, right? And right. and that's why I will always support your movement and your brand. I'm not anybody's fan. I tell everybody that. And like I said on Heritage Hip Hop, I don't like everybody's music that I interview. It's just what it is. I, but everybody has a right to tell their story, so I don't, I'm don't. i not discriminative. You know what I'm saying? It, it, that's, that's, that's not great. the point. Yeah, that's not the point of hip hop. Hip hop is not to discriminate. It was to have a voice and give voices to the voiceless. That's why you do it. But... Right. The thing about you is, and you were quoted as saying, you want a song that you can hear in Mandy's, you want a song you can hear in VH1, you want a song you can hear anywhere. Where would you like right. to hear Chief Bally's music? 
everywhere. So no. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, like in the most weirdest place, and this is probably gonna fuck your head up when I say this, um, on an elevator. Yeah, like I'm elevator fucking... music. <laughs> um, they don't even play music in elevators no more. So it's funny, but go ahead. I'm listening. No, they do. Some places, like, I've just, casinos, they still play music on elevator. Yeah. Um, and I just, yeah, it's a text. Word up in between the advertisements. But no, they still play uh, music on the elevator and casinos and shit like that. Okay. Um, or, or, um, and what, I, and what I mean by elevator, like somewhere sublime where you would never think to hear a Bally song, yo, like, some shit like that's to me like yeah like and the reason why I say elevator is because um those type of playlists you usually hear songs that are timeless like you hear that's when you hear the fucking Marvin Gaye like you hear the uh the Stevie Wonder you know what I'm saying just you, mm-hmm. when those type when you're on an elevator when you're hold music <laughs> like when you're in J C Penney's and you're walking around you oh that's my shit you you know what. Have you been? I know you have because you live in my area. Shop right in East Orange. Yeah, they play every goddamn thing. You hear in the club yeah, and everything in there. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know? yeah. Some shit yeah. like that. Like you know what I'm saying? When you walk around, you oh shit, Valley, you they playing this in here? Oh shit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That that kind of like moves me. Like when I made No Better, um, I really wrote sat out with a purpose. Was like I want this shit played in Gap, yo. Like, I want this song played in Forever 21. Did you do I want, it? I want one of those. I want one of those. Did no. you do it? <laughs> I, played, I you? played it in my store. No, 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 no. Did you ever I go there and say, I have a song for your store. Can you play this? You never did that? No, because I know the rules. I've been in retail for a long time, and they can't do no shit like that. They get their music from corporate, and I would have to go to corporate, and it's a whole process. But oh. I did play it in my store. Yeah, and they loved it, they didn't they? Do. Yeah, yeah, I play, I worked in Rockaway Mall. I used to play that shit up there all the time. <laughs> Shout out to Rockaway Mall, Route 80, was good. <laughs> all right, so, <laughs> so, that's bugged out, I've been there in years, but all right, so let's, just, let's continue. <laughs> the funniest thing about hip hop is a lot of people won't, won't recognize you until you're gone. Like, I think Common is one of the most underappreciated MCs ever. Because you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah Common's, like, my Common drop. That's what's up. And when Common start dropping, it's like, damn, I need to really need the Common album right now. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, right. How does the landscape of hip-hop change when Chief Bally releases music? Oh, good question. <clears throat> um, <laughs> if you ask me, motherfuckers shaking in their boots right now. <laughs> 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 All right. Um. <laughs> well, to me, I would hope when one of my songs come on, if you get that familiar feeling again that a friend came over, a family member just came to, came to the house that you ain't seen in a minute. Um, I want that feeling of, oh, shit, we about to make it again. We about to go on another run. Oh, we, oh here we go. We're in the finals. Oh, we about to win. Like, I want that feeling every time one of my records come on. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's a familiar voice. It's a familiar friend. Oh, shit, my, my best friend just came through my crib. Like, you know what I mean? That feeling. Um, I want that feeling again of when you were a kid and you got to stay at the, the best cousin's house <laughs> and you got to spend the night and play with your toys all night. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, wow. it's that nostalgic that feeling. You know what I mean? So, yeah. That would be dope. Before we finish out the interview, once again, everybody, this is Karev from Heritage Hip Hop, where uh, we are here with Chief Bally of the 420 Bally Hour oh, Show on A Squad Rebel Radio. And he also has two new singles out right now, Redemption and Stay Winning. Make sure you support, stream it to like it, purchase it to love it, and make, make the new yeah. grow. Shout out to Tanya Champagne and the Champagne International Music Group who signed this great artist, and you will be seeing him international and domestic in a stereo CD MP3 near you. For the final two That's questions... Amazing. For the final two questions, we about to have. You already know what the last question is, but I wanted to change it up a little bit for the for the question before because you said something today and yesterday that kind of sparked something in me that I never really. I don't think I really got to ask you, and okay. it was this: How does 420 make music better when you hear it and you do it? 
how does 420 make music better versus when you hear it and when you know it? How does it make it better as you hear it and as you do it? Oh, the, oh, the 420. <laughs> 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 I didn't saw that true. Um, well, honestly, it's, it, it can be a hindrance and a good thing at the same time. Explain. Um, before I started learning about my strands and stuff, I was just burning. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and doing, and doing. What happens is, is that certain strands can make you sleepy and make you tired and make you non productive. Mm-hmm. Whereas other strands promote creativity. Mm-hmm. I was finding that before I knew strands, I'm just buying shit, ran, you know, off the streets, just buying shit. You don't know what it is, you're just trying to get high. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes I'm sitting thinking, okay, I'm going to smoke this one and just. Let's get to it. Let's get to to this verse, and then I'm sleep twenty minutes later. <laughs> like, right. Or it's making me so lazy, and I just want to watch TV, or I'm stuck on a fucking couch. So until I started studying my strands and knowing that sativa um, is the creative one, that's the creative me, that's the creative side, that's the one that gets you energetic and gets you pumps and gets those thoughts going. So how does it help in that sense? Um, it loosens your inhibitions. It, it brings down your 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 barriers. It, it opens your mind up. Um, me myself, I have a hard time creating in my home. Um, mm-hmm. I have three children. I have a wife. Um, so Shout I have a very family. hard time. Yes, sex. Um, mm-hmm. So I have a very hard time because when I'm here, I'm husband. You know, I'm dad. Mm-hmm. Chief Valley don't have no reason this motherfucker. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know if I like Valley around my kids. Like, now I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, but it's hard for me to create here. So sometimes, yeah, a little total on that will help me go. All right, they're good in there. They're gonna leave me alone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't worry about them. He ate already. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like she's straight. <laughs> you know, focus on what the fuck you're doing. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes I go outside. When I used to drive, I had um, I used to sit in my driveway in my car, and I used to find that the most stuff comes to me at that point outside, just being outside smoking. So yeah, in that sense, it, it definitely helps. You know, opens the mind up, and it definitely um, helps flow thoughts flow and process easier. Mm-hmm. Bonus question: How has being a father and a husband made you a better rapper, artist, musician, MC? Oh man, made me more aware, um, more responsible for what I'm saying, um, and taking responsibility for, and my message that I'm putting out there. Um, the message has always been that that message that I told you about, as far as winning and staying um, true to yourself and things like that. However, um, having children, having children made me expand my music and my ear as well because. The Hateful Eight, if you listen to it, is maybe three curses on that whole entire record, Mm -hmm. literally. And I did that for a reason because I found one day I was playing one of my some of my songs in the car, and I had all my you know all three of my kids in there, and I had to turn and skip things because it had curses in it, or I was saying shit like you know sleeping with chicks or whatever the case may be, Mm -hmm. or certain punchlines I just didn't want them to hear. And then I thought to myself, you know, I don't want this to happen, like, in America. I don't want people to be riding around and have to skip records. I want my shit to just rock. But you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I, I don't want an album where you got to skip to five and skip to ten because a certain person's in the car. I just want you to put my shit in and then we rock it. So that's how the Hateful Eight kind of was born. It was like, I want to make an album full of smash records that literally can be played any fucking where you go. <laughs> any if you got the underground guy in the car, you got the guy that just likes likes gospel hat rap, you got the guy that loves love songs, you got the guy that loves a two step. I've tried to make every single record on that shit pop. You got the hip hop historian. Okay, so cool. I made a song with J Dilla. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like so I really try to touch everything on that record. Um so yeah, that 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 was that was the purpose of that for sure. <clears throat> So once again, for the final question, everybody who listens to Harry of Hip Hop knows this is the most important question to ask. One day, Chief Valley's not going to be here in 2,000, 3,000 years from now. Somebody's going to find something weird, like an alien device called the MP3. <laughs> they're going to find your music. They might not even have laptops in the future, but they're going to find something in a time capsule, and it's going to have one of your albums in there. 
You feel me? And mm-hmm. when they yep. hear your music, you're going to be reintroduced to a new generation of people who hear music for the first time that way. Wow. What is the legacy of Chief Bally, and how did he make the life better? How did he make, how did he make life better by doing music? Hmm. The legacy would be that there's no such thing as <clears throat> trying to belong to something. There's no such thing. Be yourself. Be true to who you are. Is this create your own gang? What do you? I you said. Um, G, you and the nigga, I done started my own gang. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Create your own. Like, make, make people want to follow you. Be the leader that you're naturally born to be, that you are anyway. Um, you was who you was before you got here. <laughs> like, so be that. Um, you said legacy. And what was the other part of your question? I'm sorry, Rev. How did you make life better because you did music? Um... Yeah, I made I'm, the way I'm. Yeah, absolutely, the same exact way. By mm-hmm. by inspiring people to be themselves, by inspiring people to not try to live under a certain type of expectation, because you know I believe a whole society of that you're just basically a whole bunch of people following. You're just a bunch of sheep. <laughs> like nobody's gonna have their own ideas anymore, and everybody's gonna be stuck in this one expectation box. So absolutely, that's that's that would be my legacy and how I changed things. So everybody out here, everybody out there listening, don't ever try to be what should not be true to yourself. Because at the end of the day, there's only two people who can judge you. That's your conscience and the Most High who gave you your conscience. Don't try to impress. Try to don't try to impress. Live to make a difference. That way, you do not try, but you succeed in everything you do. And with that being right. said, we like to say peace. And we yo, out. yo, thank you so much for having me, my dude, yo. Peace and blessings, Joe. Thank you once again for listening to this episode of the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. It's always a pleasure to kick it with an MC. And Chief Bally is a conversation that's very lively and also very informative. I respect the fact that he represents his craft well. And even when he goes into 420 culture, he does it for the betterment of people, not just for the effects of it. So salute to him. Shout out to Champagne International Music Group, who has international talent. And shout out to the A&R grumpy old man. You know what I'm saying? He uh, helps keep hip hop official in Jersey. With that being said, we're going to close this out by telling everybody, check out HeritageHipHop.com for exclusives and more. You know, if you're a member to the website, membership has its privileges, and we have playlists that feature Chief Bally, and we celebrate the entire hip-hop culture internationally there. So if you want to follow us, become members to our website, www.heritagehiphop.com. We are also on YouTube as well. If you would like to get any apparel, our store is on www.storefrontier.com forward slash heritage hip-hop. Get yourself a hoodie, a t-shirt, all of the above, you know? And before we close out, we got to shout out our team. Shout out to Fatty's Place. Fatty's Place is the virtual assistant. If you want your social media to pop and people to notice you, check them out on Instagram at F-A-D-D-Y-S-P-L-A-C-E. Talk to them and they'll hook you up and have you looking real representative. Also, if you're looking for marketing, placement, and promotion, Check out Fire Jaws on F I R E J A W S on Instagram. Fire Jaws is part of the team and he has us looking real good right now all over the world. Shout out to Lex Diamonds of Diamonds Entertainment LLC, D I E M E N Z Entertainment LLC, who's about sports, fashion, and the other side of hip hop life. I also like to shout out ADR of The Big A Show, which is on YouTube. Season 2 is coming. And I am the co-host of that show. And that's so crazy. Very lively. We talk about all things. That's on YouTube once again at A-H-D-A-Y-A-R. Adiar, the Big A Show on YouTube. Once again, this show is brought to you by Transparent Credit Repair, the superheroes of the financial literacy and credit repair world. If you're looking to clean your credit and also give your wallet some much needed room to receive money, and not just give money out, you can contact them at www.transparentcreditrepair.com 
and you can call them at 862-250-5122. Tell them Heritage Hip Hop sent you and you get something special. For everybody out there listening, Heritage Hip Hop is thankful for everyone who spends the time to listen to us because you help build our platform and build our movement. So to everybody out there, thank you for all that you contributed, be it time, word of mouth, or sharing the post. We have more coming to you very soon. And with that, we say peace, and we're out.